Oh my God, I am now live. This is always the um, absolute cringiest bit when I'm live and I'm hoping beyond all hope that Katie Collins is gonna join me in a minute. Um, and I'm just waiting for her to, to join me on her publication day, which is very exciting. Fingers crossed she will pop up in a minute. She's promised me that she won't leave me hanging. There she is. She was true to her word. Hello, hello. Lots of hellos already. Evening. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Happy day. Yay. How are you? Got my, got my no secco. No, mine, mine isn't a no, but it's only a small glass. <laughs> Yay, cheers. Cheers. Congratulations. How does it feel? Thank you. It's a weird one, especially being locked down and, you know, going on your daily walk with your yeah. book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doing the kids' tea and bed and uh, just like normal daytime stuff. And it's actually like a massive day for you because your book is out. It's very exciting that it's out in the world. Um, I was lucky enough to get a proof copy and have a read a little while ago. And as you know, I absolutely loved it. So it is a pleasure to see you this evening and um, yeah, celebrate all things from the best is yet to come. So Thanks. I'm gonna ask you some questions and I know we've got some questions sent in from other people as well, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, the first one I think is for people that are tuning in and saying they're very excited about this book that's out. Um, yeah. hello, hello, lots of hellos Hi. on the um, Where, could you just give everybody that's tuning in like a little summary of, I know it's hard to give a short summary, but what is the book about? Okay, so The Best Is Yet To Come. This is my sixth novel and it's uplifting and heartwarming and all the kind of good stuff that we all need in our lives at the moment with everything yeah. going on. Um, and yeah, it's really hard to sum up your book because I always feel like it just sounds rubbish. And I'm like, <laughs> just buy my book, it's really good. Like, it's just cringe. So I'll try. So this, The Best Is Yet To Come, I think you probably the light's probably not so great. It's about Izzy, who's a new mum, and she's struggling quite a bit. The baby doesn't stop crying. She hasn't got any family nearby. She's just got a husband who's just kind of a bit useless. And she's just feeling very much out of her depth. Everything isn't what she imagined it would be. She looks on Instagram and sees all these mums who are nailing it and she's struggling and, you know, just milky boobs and not showered for days. And Something that I re could relate to. I said it was inspired by, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're nodding along. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think a lot of new mums kind of go into it imagining how it would be. And then the reality is usually very different when you've not slept yeah. and your body's Definitely. just completely changed. Yeah, so she, she um, she's having a really hard time and she's feeling very lonely and she meets her neighbour who's a man called Arthur. He's in his mid 80s, so he's at a very different stage in his life. Um, but sadly, he lost his wife and he's just kind of given up on life. He's got to the age where he's just, he just feels a bit, he doesn't want to be a burden. And I think that's his worry. Um, and that kind of mirrors Izzy as well. There's times when she doesn't want to be a burden either. I think asking for help when you're really struggling can feel really challenging because um, yes. you don't want to admit that you're failing when, especially when everyone around you seems to be, you know, doing perfectly. Um, so they come together and they form this quite unlikely friendship. Um, Arthur's about to be moving to a retirement home, but there's a lot more to that move than meets the eye. He's kind of, they're both sat on their own quite juicy secrets. Um, yeah. So it's a story about them coming together, about finding each other, but also finding themselves. Um, yes. so, yeah. so does that sound okay? <laughs> oh, so right, because um, I like, I was trying to jot down, I was trying to be professional and jot down some like notes and some, some like pointers about the book. And I was thinking, even though there are some quite um, kind of sad moments and there's some poignant things in there, um, obviously they're both kind of, you know, there's, 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 there's kind of grief there and, um, and she's struggling and all the rest of it. But how you described it at the beginning in terms of being hopeful and uplifting is, is I think the main vibe. Like it's not, it's not depressing in any way. It's like super happy and just that kind of, 
life affirming it kind of yeah. gives gives you restores your faith in humanity when you see their friendship for me that was that was what I took from it I was like how lovely that their their companionship is just the cutest isn't it it's so sweet yeah. it's really unusual I think intergenerational friendship is kind of a, is, isn't common and you think they'd have nothing in common themselves you know an 80 year old and well she's like late 20s early 30s yeah. new mom but they they kind of they do have lots more in common than than you imagine and I really wanted the book to be to be like you said hopeful I wanted you to kind of laugh and cry but also when you turn to the last page you've got a big smile on your face and you're feeling positive and yeah, yeah especially after the year that we've all had I just think the kindness of, of strangers or the kindness in the community of where we all live like I know my neighbors so much more than I did a year well a year ago yeah <laughs> in pandemic um but I think you know I think it's something we can all relate to uh, which is why it's called the best is yet to come I think again it's something we're all clinging on to with the vaccines that life you know on. yeah yeah definitely I think Izzy is just so relatable like there's no I, I can't imagine there's any brand new parent that isn't like has that feeling of being thrown in at the deep end um without like a manual or an instruction book and she has that feeling that everybody else is coping much better than she is doesn't she like she thinks that everybody else has got it sussed and she's just like kind of plodding along but getting everything wrong and she's she kind of doesn't have any confidence and I think that was the that's that's why it's really lovely to kind of see Izzy's journey to yeah better about herself as well as well as making a friend it was like yes you you kind of root for her you think come on Izzy you can do it um which <laughs> Yeah, and the, some of the scenes, they're just so, like, I found myself going, yeah. That was a bit like with the health care, <laughs> and um, a bit where, a bit where um, the thing I, that I thought was brilliant was where she's kind of feeling that disconnect with her other half, because it's sort of like his life hasn't changed. He gets up and goes to work and then does his hobbies, and she's kind of thinking, well, hang on, my life's sort of imploded. Yours is just as it was. And he asks where his where his kit is for sport and she says yeah, your kit. in the washing basket just put a bit of Febreze on it that'll do and I, I laughed out loud because I was like oh my god I've done that or I, where, you, where your standards are lowered you know you sort of do the sniff test and go it, you, you get, it's fine it's all good <laughs> so um, yeah. I kind of hope that would be like an early motherhood stage but you know I've got I've got two children now and I'm still like ah oh, that'll do it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah, exactly. That'll do is a good motto. I always think that that'll do. Some, you know, your your best is your best is good enough. It doesn't always have to be brilliant. Um, but yeah, yeah so, and I, that's what. There's, there's this, yeah, there's there's the obviously a beautiful, beautiful friendship between Izzy and Arthur, which is just amazing. Then you've got the the theme of of, of grief and how they're kind of they're they're both living with loss. And I just wondered how much. Of that I'm sure I probably know the answer but how much of that is informed by your own experiences of grief do you think yeah so like you know as well we both lost a parent yeah. uh, young and it can't not impact your writing I think as it impacts your whole life yeah. um, so I my previous novel which was called how to say goodbye that was very firmly set around grief and it was kind of my own working out this 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 tangle in my head that I'd found myself um my dad passed away very suddenly um he was out water, walking my daughter she was five months old and he had a massive heart attack and and that was that I'd said goodbye to him that morning gave him a kiss and I never saw him again and that shook me up as well as happening when you know my daughter was so so young the policewoman brought her back to me and then I was breastfeeding the next minute and it just in this fog of what I've got to be a mum, and I'm also lost my dad and it was just insane so to make sense of that I then thought right I need to write about it I need to write my yeah. feelings and jot down and I just need to kind of work through this and I remember going to um to the funeral home and the lady who who organized the funeral was a young woman and as she was doing those things I was thinking what made you do this job how did you get into this how do you sleep what do you like I just was fascinated in this kind of industry that I had no knowledge of before so she became the base of my um character in my previous novel how to say goodbye which is called grace um so that was very much on uh the funeral industry and grief and kind of how we talk about death or how we don't talk about death 
Yeah. So, and again, it's it's a very uplifting novel. Yeah. It sounds really heavy. Yeah. But that's <laughs> not yeah, about, it's about death and like conversations around death. Is it? I think people always assume it's going to be, you know, naturally just this really, really um, heavy, deep, sad beast which obviously some in, in in a way is and it can be like that but also there can be so much humor and and you know it's something that we yeah. all you know we're, we're, we're all gonna die at some point so it's yeah. that coming to terms with that I found when I was reading how Izzy was feeling um having lost a parent it was that um again that relatability of thinking yeah that's how you feel because when you feel vulnerable as a new parent anyway I think then I suddenly became hyper aware of new mums who were out with their mums it almost felt like they were planted yeah. they were everywhere it was like you yeah. couldn't stop without seeing a mum and a, and a nanny and I just was like oh my god like is, is yeah. anybody <laughs> out <Yeah. laughs> <Are they? laughs> um, but yeah and actually it was nice then that she found that kind of extra friendship and support that she needed with Arthur you know it was yeah um, that that little boost which was a, which yeah. was a, so I think yeah, yeah it just it it did make me kind of think, you know, there's always going to be that, that space, that, that hole missing. And you kind of build your life around that gap where it is. Even today, I've had a big cry being like, oh, I wish, you know, he could see here that I'm on my sixth book. Like, he would just be like, what? It's amazing. Yeah. And, and that's nice. That I know how he'd be thinking. And it's kind of a comfort, I think. Um, yes. I found myself lucky that, you know, we had such lovely times together and we've had such a great relationship. And I think... That's such an yeah, so is he an input out what you write and who you are? So it, it kind of he's he's all, he's always there because of that because everything you say and probably I mean you shared you shared a picture of, of the two of you back along and I was like oh my goodness like the, the your like your eyes your face <laughs> like it was it was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that, and I was like that would be the dad then yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there. really similar yeah. Um, yeah, and so in the book, um, Izzy, um, she's lost her mum as well. And I think trying to be a mother without a mother um, is something that she's trying to figure out, I guess. And like for, for you as well, how have you, how did you find Mother's Day? Are you kind of, where were you up I, with it? I always find Mother's Day really weird because I think you, like mentally I prepare for it because you, you get quite, you get emails and stuff a lot in advance, don't you? Yeah. And, on a new meaning because I am now a mother so it's not the same I think it was harder in I don't know it was almost harder before I had kids in some ways because the day then had no meaning like for me but also now because I am a mum you can't just pretend it doesn't happen can you you can't be like well just batten down the hatches today and not yeah. and acknowledge it because the kids are like it's mother's day <laughs> not that yeah. it really kids when it's mother's day does it I was like is everybody going to behave today and they like no, literally no one behaved so I just had, had but yeah, no, it is hard. And I think, I think Izzy is just, you just really want somebody to take care of her, don't you? You just want somebody to um, help her out and show her that she's doing a good job, even though she, like, she doesn't think she is, but we, we think she is. But as a reader, you go, come on, like, you can do it. So oh. yeah, she's lovely. I, I, lo I love her. As, as, as humans, as mothers, as kind of when you're in just like stressful situations, when you're being challenged, I think you want someone to just give you a pat on the back and be like, doing really well keep going or keep yeah try, but. yeah you want somebody to say you're doing a good job or you want somebody to say um do you know what I, i'm there's loads of days when i'm not doing a good job either like you want somebody that solidarity don't you of somebody to go god this is what i well, this is what happened to me today and so it makes yeah. you feel a bit better well, um, really she she would do well with with you in her life with your books <laughs> because that realism want, and that like, this yeah. is normal this chaos this is fine like I think she'd go yes yeah yeah no it was it was it was it's just lovely it was it's, it is just honestly a really lovely book for anybody that is just um tuning in and has stumbled across it Katie's fabulous new book the best is yet to come is out today and we are and we are celebrating it in um in all its glory um we both kind of put a little um like a question prompt out earlier and said has anybody got any questions that they would like um to ask us there's always that there's always that um there's always that fear when you think oh my god imagine if no if, imagine if there's none but there were some so um, Yay. <laughs> i would start um with one that i think is is kind of you know often on people's minds when you say i'm i'm writing a book and then they kind of see the kids and that is how 
how has it been to juggle um, writing and motherhood? Mm-hmm. But perhaps more specifically than that, how has it been juggling writing and motherhood in the middle of a global pandemic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's been, I mean, what a year we've had, like no other. My yeah. same grace has been my childminder. So because mine, I've got my son and daughter, they're two and three. So they're still quite little. So they could go to preschool or childminder for quite a lot. of, And that just allowed me to have a small window where I could have some sanity, have some kind of breathing time. And honestly, I just think homeschooling, I don't know how you've done it. I I don't. I don't know. I have done it in some, some, (laughs) like, it's like, yeah out-of-body experience now that we've um, we've lived through it but I, I remember thinking that all I I think the frustrating thing is this there, there are times aren't there when you're writing when you think I, I don't actually know what to write next and I don't know where to go with this but more frustrating than that is when you do know what to write and you do know where to go with it and you're really like eager to play and write and then all of a sudden it's like the kids are at home nobody's allowed anywhere because everything's shut and I just remember thinking I've got no like headspace there's no I don't know how I don't know how I'm going to get any of this on the page because yeah always somebody here like I love my family but my god like what, what why are you here the whole time there's no like you know I remember being like I just need to get the chapter out and I just said to James it's just never going to get written but it does it's like there's like a it, it's magic I think you kind of you know one way or another if it's there it get in it, if it's up here it does eventually spill on spill onto the page somehow but it's hard. But that frustration is so real. And I, I've lost my patience so many times and I'd snap and I'd just be like, I just want to be alone with my yeah. thoughts. It's like you've got another person in your head constantly because it's just yeah. noise. I yeah. don't, well, I know at the stage where it's just whiny noise, snack, toys, just, and then your thoughts and then like, oh, house stuff. And then book. Yeah. And, it's, and then you go to the end of the night, you're like, oh my God, I just, no wonder. Yeah. I'm like losing the plot because I've just got a constant stream of sound in my yeah. head. And, and it's how all, are you going to write a book? No, it's all, it's all that, like you say, like all that, like almost like life admin that you have to do as well around the, around the edges. And then, and then looking after the kids and whether that's schooling or you're looking after preschoolers or a new baby. I really like, I really feel so massively for anyone who's had a new baby in lockdown. Um, yeah. Because, I don't know, I feel like if that was me, I would have felt cheated. That I would have been like, I'm really annoyed that I'm on maternity leave and everybody, yes. else, not everybody else is off because they haven't yes. been. Like, James is a worker and he's still been going to work. And, you know, I know not, every, not everybody's furloughed and all the rest of it. But a, a great, you know, the, the kind of, the, the UK did sort of stand still in a way. And I would have been really annoyed if, if, if I'd been on maternity leave. And it was like, oh, everybody's off and everything's shut. Like, it would have been so... It's crap. So it's really crap. And yeah, you can't go around to people's houses. I know, it's, it's, really lo- it's just, honestly, my heart goes out to all the new mums out there and dads because it's just been rubbish. And it's- you all deserve all the babysitting in the world and all the kind of cafe pub lunches that you've not had. It's, you know. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just, yeah, it's just mad. But I think, I think it's hard to, I think it's hard to juggle writing with like parenthood ordinarily isn't it you know because I feel like there's always some you know it's quite hard to to zone out of that being mum or being dad heads headspace occupies quite a lot of your brain but especially over the last year for me it's been like trying to have some sort of boundaries so kind of thinking right if the kids are at school or we'll start nursery that's like a few hours and to really try and just like yeah like put any distractions down and just and just write because yeah, just... i just i'm like okay i've got four hours oh twitter instagram oh hoover I... what yeah. are you doing this is yeah. precious <laughs> yeah i find any excuse to procrastinate so i will be like right i'm gonna write this now i'm gonna crack on with this chapter i know exactly what i'm doing yeah. and then i find myself taking a quiz like which which what card garlic bread you <laughs> Well, I'd better find out. Um, but like, stuff there's no need for me to be doing, but I just find yeah. a reason. 
Um, but yeah, no, I think it's, it is always a juggle. Um, I suppose there's a difference between when you're juggling it. Like I, I feel, I don't know about you, I feel massively privileged that I can, like writing is, my, is now my job. So I can, that is what I'm, I'm not, whereas to start with, when I started the blog and I started the first book, I had another job as well as being, so I was a mum and I had a job and I was trying to write. And then it was like, something has to give. Like, it's quite hard, isn't it? To, um, so I do always sort of think, I am quite lucky that, yeah, that there is that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. There was a lot of e-writing in the evenings, writing before work, just kind of like you said, cram it in. Yeah. Uh, and now, but that's the other thing when I've got a full day in normal times, when I'd have a full day planned. I would not start writing till the afternoon and then be like, Oh my God, I haven't got long. <laughs> like, oh. just... I have to do a speed, but I try to set, I do try to find, I try and set myself a word count target because mm -hmm. if I don't, nothing gets done and what the, the like hilarious thing it's a bit like having a dissertation or something isn't it the closer you get to a deadline it was like if I'd kept on my promise to myself back in September and written a thousand words a day I'd have been on track <laughs> but here we are and I've got to do four and a half thousand words a day for the next yeah. two weeks um <laughs> yeah. because past you is really annoyed right now <laughs> yeah yeah definitely um but yeah, so it is a juggle would be the answer it is definitely a juggle it's not always it's not always easy um but obviously we must love it because we, because we do it. So um... that's the other side of it. It is now, that's my happy place. That is yeah. the kids are in bed or the, or the kids aren't here. There's no distractions. And when, like you said, when you've got a scene or when you've got something that you're like, oh, and that's what my next book that I'm currently working on, I'm about to do my first draft of. I'm literally so excited because I've just been caught up in all the publicity and, the, and promoting the best is yet to come. It's just been, it's been fantastic. But there's, you know, there's quite a lot of publicity stuff to do with like podcasts and interviews yeah. and writing features and all really lovely, exciting things. But it means I've not picked up my old book for a couple of weeks now. Okay. And so next week, I'm just buzzing to get going with it again. And I think feeling that excitement, it's not always like that. There's days when you're like, this is awful. <laughs> what am I doing? This is, you know, I delete everything or I start again or I doubt myself. And there's a lot of anxiety. And I think because it's such a solo job as well. When you're not seeing anybody else, you're in normal life. You can't even socialize at the moment. You can't even meet up with friends and you're just working by yourself. And we don't have teams or Zoom calls or anything like that. So there was a couple, there's a time when I literally just saw my husband and my children. And I thought, this yeah. is not good. And thankfully my friends kind of stepped up and were like, right, we need to have more FaceTimes, more Zooms, so you can actually see yeah. another human thing. <laughs> and you're not well like that. Um... One of the hardest things I find about writing is is that you'll have like days like you've described where it's 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 amazing and you're like this is the dream and I love it and I'm really motivated. But then on the days that you're not, there's not really anybody that can talk you out of or talk you down from how you're feeling sometimes because um, if you, in in like jobs I've had in the past, you have like a one to one review, don't you, with a with a manager or whatever, and they yeah, go, "What's the performance best review?" Yeah, this is how well you're doing. This is your competency framework. Blah blah blah. And as sad as it sounds, <laughs> quite like that because if yeah. I felt quarter, somebody would go, "This is what you're doing well, and this is what you're not doing so well," or you know, improvement areas or whatever. And I think it's quite hard when you're a long time between edits or feedback. You kind of you can talk yourself into thinking, actually, this is the biggest load of tripe that's ever been written, and it's and there's what am I doing? With, what am I doing? And you wait until you then get feedback from somebody that goes, "This is really good," and then you're like, "Oh." Thank God, and off we go again. Yes. Yeah, it's a roller coaster of emotions. And again, with publication day, it's like, yeah, this is fantastic. It's coming out. <gasps> that yeah. means people are reading it. That means they can leave reviews. Oh my God, what, like it is. But then, but then yeah. you get a nice review, and you're like, yeah, this is brilliant. They're gonna like yeah. it. And, but no, oh, so it's it never yeah, stops. You, um, exposed almost today. Now that it's out, like I feel like there's often that feeling of like you're really excited about it. But then it's like you've, you've, you've let it out. It's been like born in the world. And then you can't, you can't take it back then, can you? Yeah. So it, it's quite... Yeah, even, even now with like, so the final copy is when, for me, the nerve wracking moment is when the final copy goes to print and there's yeah. no chance. And you get that, that message, that email from the editor and be like, right, this is the last, the last chance for anything. And I just feel so, by that time you're sick of it. You've read it so many yeah. times. You could read, yeah. you could probably say word for word, but you're still yeah. like, oh my God, no. And then that's the, usually when I have a massive wobble and yeah. I need my editor to say, you know, well, it's too late. 
<laughs> it doesn't matter what you what you want to change it's too late unless it's like a massive legal yeah. mess up we're not changing it yeah. going to the printers and then i yeah. think after it's it's done it's like your hands yeah i can remember agonizing over i think it was like it was like honest quite honestly like one word in about you know ninety thousand words or whatever and i remember i'd like changed it from the original word and then i'd change it to something else and then eventually i'd changed it back and i'd got my i'd like become fixed on this one word or sentence and then I realized you know anybody else is just you know, when you're reading a book you, nobody else reads it like we read them no. we read it's, it's, a, it's a funny sort of read isn't it like every yeah. single word nice but I'm like I, you know if I'm reading a book at the moment I'm not kind of pondering over every like turn of phrase or or word no. it's that's not how people read but um no. and that's just like a literary fiction piece of you know piece of fiction that you know is yeah. all about the pro and the narrative and then yeah. to think okay maybe but like I like uplifting feel good reads that I think you know they should be easy to read that's the kind of <laughs> yeah did you have to um did you ever have to like do the anthology for GCSEs do you remember that yeah. it was... and um that's what I always think of when I'm trying to find like the right word I think there's not going to be a class of you know year 11 yeah. sat down underlining my <laughs> metaphor <laughs> Really, it doesn't really it's not the same like not that it's, it's not that um yeah <laughs> but it's certainly an interesting one. have you looked at what other what other questions we got um funny enough, who's yeah you, I, was, I, I haven't been able to see, so i've got this the uh, light but now i'm like i'm blinded <laughs> some oh. somebody um which i sort of touched on in terms of personal development reviews but somebody asked um if we ever miss our old jobs, so do jobs we had before, before. Yeah, what before? Um, I worked in finance for a bit, so I used to finance agricultural machinery. That was my, that was my job. Cute. And um, I worked in higher education in like admin, basically at, um, at the university. So yeah, the kind of a mixed, a mixed bag. Uh, there are bits I miss, but there's nothing I would, there's genuinely nothing I would rather do than yeah. what I'm doing now. So yeah. yeah. I miss, exactly. I think. Oh God, I miss someone making a cup of tea and being like, did you watch that last night? Or, you know, just real nothing. Yeah. I just miss that so much. And, and like you said, someone to be like, how are you doing? Or are you doing really well? Or have you thought yeah. about this? Bounce ideas off. But you go to a co-working space now, yeah. don't you? Benefit of a co-working office, which has been amazing. Um, I mean, obviously everything's a bit crazy at the moment because of, because of covid but in non in non covid times it's like it's like a, a breath of fresh air because you can go in and um and, and sit at the and kind of just yeah work oh sorry that's my okay, go on. <laughs> that, that was my cactus that i'm um i'm leaning my camera up against um fresh yeah fresh <laughs> james came in earlier and was like is that what you're using and i um i mean i wish i could show you the setup but i don't want to i don't want to wreck the but i'm basically okay. i've basically got a cactus balanced on a um on a box that i took out of the recycling and balanced my phone up against it always and also i've, I've positioned like a lamp a reading lamp because i thought that 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 will make my skin look better yeah um, well mine but, i feel like it's, just, it's too much i'm like i can't really uh, see yeah. co co-working offices and cafes like nobody's safe i'm I, as soon as i'm in there i'm like look i'm like looking for a victim of somebody that i can <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talk to me <laughs> yeah exactly talk to me talk to me please talk to me um make me a cup of tea or just yeah chat about stuff but yeah what did you now do? with the postman i'm like oh yeah hi so yeah it's like oh or, like a tesco delivery driver they think i'm nuts and then my yeah. children are, like ravaged they run to the door and they're like yeah i'm like we've not seen another human for so long this is so exciting exactly <laughs> What did you used to do work-wise? What was uh, what... So I used to work at Manchester Airport. I worked in the PR department there and it was fantastic. I absolutely loved my job. It was so exciting. I was young and just carefree and just doing these really cool things. Got to travel and got to meet like celebrities and it was it was just brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then when when I got jilted, that was when I thought, right, I'm going to just chat. Even, even though we're here. Again, to discuss Katie's The Best Is Yet To Come, which is out today. Um, you you absolutely, we cannot let this whole life go past 
but without because I even just reading so I knew I sort of knew your story anyway but even just reading like the little author author bio blurb in your book it is incredible slash insane so can you just tell people how you got into writing books in the first place what it was that happened that started this whole adventure yeah so this was a few years ago now um I was in a long-term relationship and we were meant to get married and that didn't happen and it was it was just awful it was really it was really awful you know I had the big wedding booked and and it got called off and kind of to cope with that heartbreak I just presumed my life was going in one direction and I had it all planned out and then suddenly I had no idea what I was doing or where I was going or who I was I found myself single and I was still kind of getting you know things about my wedding was coming through I had my wedding dress it was just it was really heartbreaking so what I decided to do was go and quit my job sell everything my car my, we sorted out the house uh, and put everything that I owned into a backpack and whatever I didn't own I got rid of or sold and then me and my backpack went and traveled around southeast asia by myself and this is from a girl who'd never gone anywhere by herself and my parents thought I had lost the plot I think people just thought I, you know it was just so out of character but I just thought I need to do something out of this. I need a breakup to be, you know, something good's got to come of it. And I started traveling. And when I was traveling, I started a blog called notweddordead.com, which is my Instagram name. Yeah. Uh, that blog just kind of blew up. And it was, I was getting people saying, oh, we're following your journey. Or I was also dumped and heartbreak is just awful. And I just didn't feel alone, I guess, having yeah. other people out there going through it with me. Um, so then to cut a long story short, um, that kind of inspired my first lot of books, which is a Lonely Hearts Travel Club series. So that yeah. followed uh, Georgia Green, who is the backpacking Bridget Jones, which is what kind of media called me. And yeah. um, she goes to all these different destinations and the places that I've traveled to and meets this massive bunch of characters. So my, the first novel, which was Destination Thailand, was very much based on kind of my experiences. But as the series kind of developed and the characters just kind of come to life, so I kind of took a step back from that. Um, but the thing that kind of makes my story even more kind of bizarre is that the journalist that kind of broke my story to the world that kind of said, you know, this is this girl who's written this book and she's gone traveling and kind of inspired all these broken hearted people is now my husband. That is <laughs> so, yeah. Amazing. So basically, the journalist who wrote about how you had gone traveling after your long-term relationship had broken down, then became your next relationship, and you had them. Yeah. So that is we insane. Went, I know, it's mad. We went to uni together, but we hadn't spoken for 10 years. Yeah. And we got in touch on Facebook, and I said, listen, I've written this book. Could you, know, could you help promote it? And, um, and he just said, yeah, yeah, fine. And he, I was hoping for, like, my mum's local paper. That's, like, where my standards were, my level. And yeah. he managed to get it into the Liverpool Echo, which is a regional yeah. paper and then after that it just I don't know what happened it just went crazy and I went like all across the world I went on this morning I've been filmed in Australia I've just I it, it was just bonkers and the only person I wanted to speak to through it all was him and we got we met up in London and fell in love and when that within that first year I was we were moving in together and I was pregnant and we got married and it's just yeah. been bonkers but yeah. brilliant <laughs> That is incredible, honestly. Like, what, what a story. It's, um, it's amazing. Um, somebody's asked uh, what Joey did next. It says, hi, Katie, I can't wait to read the book. Uh, do you both have any advice for aspiring writers? Um, mine would be not to get too hung up on it being perfect. Just yeah. get it done. Would you yeah. agree with that? Uh, yeah, my, my, big, my biggest piece of advice, when other people say to me, like, how do I get started? Like, I really want to write, but I don't know where to start. Um, and, you know, I don't know what to do to get it out there. Or they're kind of jumping ahead, you know, sort of thinking, how am I going to make, how am I going to, how am I going to make something of this? And my advice is always just to write, like, keep, keep writing. Like, I know it sounds obvious, but um, I think I got very caught up on the fact that I didn't consider myself to be a proper writer because I'd had a parenting blog that sort of blew up by accident and then, out of out of that the, the books were the books were born um but ultimately i became a writer because in my spare time i was writing like when i had a job and the kids that's what i was doing it was what i did to keep 
you know the way the way you describe going traveling because you had to do you had to do something like for you something different for me i think after i had henry i had to i felt, I felt like i had to write um to keep my mental health in check and yeah. um and so the more just write just write write and keep writing um and don't like you say don't get hung up on it being perfect or it being the final draft or it being any of those things just just keep going and also connect with other writers if you can um because support is really important I think if you find other people that are going through a similar process then it helps doesn't it you're you don't feel like an island you're like there's there's lots of us that are giving this a go yeah because it is really lonely you're kind of with your thoughts and you don't have any colleagues and you don't know if what you are writing is any good you know it's you, and I think you are so super I personally I'm a very super critical and I just yeah. think I can always be better but then or I get like kind of a freeze and I think oh it's rubbish I'm not going to do anything I want to give it up yeah then like you said you just you can't give it up because you, but and you no. literally can't. I just I couldn't not write now now I've kind of every time I start a new novel I'm like how am I going to write a hundred thousand words I don't know how to do this oh my god even though I now just released my sixth I still get that panic and I think I can't do this I don't know what I'm doing and no, then exactly. it, it, but then I couldn't not do it could not write even if no one ever read it again yeah, I think that's the key thing. I think um, I think sometimes when people ask how, um, sometimes people say to me, oh, "I want to be doing what you're doing," but I think I think as long as it comes from the place of wanting to write, that you know that that's the that's like the key bit. You have to really want to write, and then once you've done that bit, then hopefully you can do you know do something with it. And yeah, but that's the main thing. Like don't like you almost don't ever want to lose it feeling like a hobby. I think. Yeah, yeah, being a passion, passion project, yeah. being something that you just want to do because you enjoy it rather than you have to do because it's your job. Yeah. It, 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 it's such a weird job. You never switch up, off from it. you like always on your phone writing notes yeah. or whatever you are, you're just like, gotta write that down. Yeah, you'll hear, I'll hear a song lyric or, um, or some, I'll hear, hear just like a snippet of somebody's conversation or all of, all of a sudden I'll see something and I'll think actually that would be a really good link between this scene and this scene or whatever. Yeah. And um, it's on my phone. I've got this most random phone note. It's like, oh, yeah. It's rubbish that wouldn't mean anything to anybody else. But I look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's, I know, I know why I wrote that down. It like sparked yeah. something. So that's, that's, that's relevant. Because usually yeah. I wake up and I'm like, what was that? What was I yeah. trying to say? <laughs> what? Blah, blah, blah. Like, that doesn't mean anything. It's like, when you're falling asleep, you're like, I've got to get this idea down. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it is mad. Um, somebody else had asked, um what's the I think we've kind of covered what the hardest parts are um of, of being of writing so kind of all of that you know loneliness and um and doubting yourself and all the rest of it um but they've also asked what your like do you have any long-term are there any like long-term goals do you have like a is there is there like a dream moment when you're like whether it is something that's like for me you know like it would be absolutely incredible like can you imagine if somebody wants if somebody said like oh, we really want to make your book into a film or what have you. Like, yeah. To be fair, you a great film. It would be, I, or, or like, it would be amazing. I think it would be brilliant. Do you have like a, like, do you feel like every moment now is a pinch me moment or is there like one aspiring moment that you're like, oh, I, that would be amazing? Like definitely a film would be incredible. Um, but I, I think you always keep moving the goalposts. I, my last yeah. kind of Instagram post that I put up was I spoke to my best friend yesterday and I'm like, oh, my book's coming out tomorrow. I'm nervous. Like, what's it going to be like? And all this. And have I done enough? And she's just like, you've written in six books. Like, you, you're, you're kind of forgetting what process you've gone through. Yeah. Like, if I had have spoke to you 10 years ago, when, like, before I had any novels out, to even have like an agent look at my stuff, I would be absolutely buzzing because it's incredible. Yeah. And now here I am with my sixth book, The Best Is Yet To Come, which is out today. Um, I'm just like, oh yeah, like it's just amazing to be here, to be talking to you, to be kind of connecting to readers. And that it is real pinch me moment that this is still kind of happening. That's so true. And your post was, was bang on the money when you said, you know, um, there's, it's almost like that whole, you know, remember when what you've got now is what you wanted. You know, like at, what, at one point, like this this exactly this moment is the dream um so it's yeah. good to think ahead but also it's really good to kind of stay to take stock of how far you've come that's that's kind of crucial isn't it to be yeah. kind of great 
the yeah what's what's yeah. going on trying to practice some mindfulness and you know it's it's hard but then again with the internet with social media it's so easy to be like oh well so and so has got that deal and so and so is now they've got a netflix series and you yeah. know you just compare yourself all the time to yeah. other people without really knowing you know the full story yeah definitely you always feel i think you feel there's always that imposter syndrome of thinking that you're not worthy of whatever you're doing even though you're doing it so there must be some reason why you're doing it but you forget that <laughs> when you're in that moment and also that feeling of it's really hard not to have a moment where you think well, what's the point because I sometimes find that I read a book that's so good that I'm like well, I don't, I'll give up what's the point what is the point like the child in me feels like sulking and just like to be honest I could do that with yeah. yours chuck it out the window and just, what's the point why why are we carrying on when somebody else has beat you to it it doesn't work like that because you every book's different aren't they so you know and the more there are the more readers you're going to find everyone that gets a really great deal means there's more books and more readers and it's you know it's it's not just one thing there's not just one film that's gonna be made there's not just one book deal there's, there's so much you know I think this industry even through lockdown is kind of still thriving people still want yeah. books they want escapism they want you know and especially the kind of books that we write which is uplifting and kind of take you away from from where you're at the moment yeah. I think that's especially something that you know people do want to read and what sort of books, again, it comes back to another question that somebody sent us about books that we've um, enjoyed this year, but I just wondered what sort of, do you have like a type of book that you, is your go-to or like a, a particular genre or do you, are you like in quite a and read across the, across the board? Yeah, I read loads of different things. So yeah. mysteries, thrillers, romances, yeah. other uh, not too much horror, not too much sci-fi. Although I just finished uh, Last at the Party by Bethany Cook, right. which is kind of post-apocalyptic, the last woman. Yeah. And that, I, like, I still kind of got a book hangover from that. Like, I'm not ready to read something else yet because it's that, I'm yeah. still in the character's head. Um, so, yeah, I think a bit of everything, really. The only thing I try not to do is read my genre, which is, like, uplifting, kind of yeah. feel-good whilst I'm in the later stages of writing or editing, because I'm just worried that I'm going to be like plagiarizing or some subconsciously I'll be nicking things. And, do you feel the same? Oh, like I said to you, and I'm like, you know, I was writing something and I said to you, like, I'm like, you know, there's like a tiny, tiny similarity and I'm, I'm that I've just read from your blurb and I, and <laughs> so I can't read it until I've told you that this is because I've already submitted this draft and you're going to be like, well, she's copied that. And that is like the fear up with every day I'm like if I read something what if it accidentally comes out like I've copy and pasted spark notes like at university you know where it's like let's let's do this um but it's it's because there's always an overlap isn't there there's always like um whether or not it's like a dynamic in the relationship or it's a setting or it's a name like the names is the funniest one it wasn't until I started reading like until I started writing you know my own books I'd be like wow uh, that name's popped up in Every, every every book that I've read, why is that? Um, you never know. It's bad. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 just I find I love a thriller. Um, yeah, I read Girl A recently. Have you read that yet? Yes, yes, yes. I got proof of that. Yeah, yeah. Really enjoyed that one. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've been reading. I'm reading Mother at the moment. Um, which uh, it's by Laura Jarrett. It's kind of the premise of it is just like the most haunting thing ever which it's not a spoiler because it says it on the cover but basically she's involved in a car accident and she's got two child two daughters and she can only she has to make a choice she can only save one of them and i've been no. about it honestly no. it's, everybody i speak to i'm like so here's the situation this happens and then um you know and i can make jokes about it like because I, I joke to james it was it's quite a dark joke but i sort of said well obviously i'd say <laughs> Sleeps, he sleeps the best but jokes aside it has been like playing on my mind and I think that's the sign of a really like when you're gripped when you can't stop thinking about it, is I love oh. those sort of books. I oh, see anything with children they go missing they get a band like anything I can't I can't pick up before, before I had kids yeah whatever now I'm like yeah. I can't even go there I'm amazed yeah. you picked that up I mean it yeah. sounds funny, I, I, but... I, I, I'm detached from it because she's got two girls and I've got three boys so it's like it's somebody else's yeah. life <laughs> I never so um <laughs> the last the last thing um that I wanted to do um 
is obviously congratulate you again on publication day lovely book best is yet to come which is just it's just the tonic it's what people need at the moment in these dark depressing lockdown the vaccine waiting time <laughs> um and to say to remind people that we are running a giveaway so it's on your instagram page isn't it the giveaway if people want to enter win a signed copy of both of our books and a couple of other little treats i think isn't it yes like a little pampering night in because you can't go anywhere else so some chocolate and asks in both our books um which is your unmumsy the eighties got that one up there <laughs> and the best is yet to come yeah so, yeah so uh, it's going to end at midnight tonight so i'll pick the winner i'll sort that out tomorrow and uh, let them know so if they go to my instagram which is at not wed or dead um I think it's the kind of third along and follow the instructions on there. Um, yeah, so that would be really good. I'm so pleased that you enjoyed the book. And I love it. Well done, honestly. Now, I'm just in awe, you know, with the whole process. I'm in awe of anybody that's actually finished the book and had the book printed. And I think, you know, now I fully appreciate the, the blood, sweat and tears. That it. I'm just like, I just want to like hug you and say, well done, you did it. It's... Um, it's out and it's brilliant and I hope it does I hope it does really well thank you so so much it really means a lot and I'll yeah I'll speak to you soon good luck thank you everybody for your comments as well to kind of yeah thank you everybody and sorry if we didn't get around to everybody's questions we we tried but there were yeah there were there were a few more um there was also I be, I'm fairly certain having kept an eye on the comments um there was also some banter between our husbands at one stage oh god I, not sure if you missed that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like, what? It's, it's good to have our Wait. <laughs> Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Be there. But